welcome to Who's Who. I'm your host, Jonathan Munga, and today we're going to be talking with the director of the LISD Child Nutrition Program, Mr. Roberto Cuellar. Uh, thank you for being able to join us today. Thank you for the invitation. Um, uh, to start this off, I would like to know how long have you been the director for the Child Nutrition Program? Yes, I've been the director for the Child Nutrition Program for a little over five years. I've been with the district for 11 years. One thing I could say is that I have a passion for working in LISD since I myself am a product of LISD. I was a student. I did walk through the uh, you know different LISD schools. I went to J.C. Martin, then I went to Lamar, then I went to Cigarro Nixon, and then I pursued a degree in the health-related field. And this is where I am today. Uh, who would have thought that I would have been coming back to my old, uh, wonderful school district that uh, taught me well in education? And what exactly are the, responsibi for the responsibilities of a person in your position? Yes, uh, we are a large department. We're about over 319 employees, and I oversee the budget uh, that we have to have for the whole year, which includes not only food costs, but labor costs, also personnel, also the interviewing processes, also uh, making sure that all cafeteria cafeteria supervisors and cafeteria managers and staff are following through with the regulations of offering a reimbursable meal as part of the federal guidelines. Just one example, through the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, um, we are authorized and by law we should be serving a half a cup of fruit or vegetable on the, um, on the meal when the students go either to breakfast or lunch. Mm -hmm. So it's something fantastic because the focus is health and wellness and uh, it's just amazing how you know we've evolved through time and nowadays uh, here in the high schools middle schools and even elementary we're going to be offering salad bars mm -hmm. uh, salads and we have salad bars where we got this through the whole kids foundation a grant a grant money so we're excited because my focus has always been health and wellness for all because if we have healthy children they'll be healthy productive adults and are you satisfied for what you have accomplished as a director for? As a director, uh, I am satisfied, but there's always that part of me that I want to challenge myself to do that, that more, that extra mile. Mm -hmm. uh, I know serving over 24,500 students is not an easy task, but it's all a team effort mm -hmm. where we delegate, where at the end of the day, what counts is that the student got to have a meal because a lot of the students, uh, you know, we don't take things for granted, uh, may not have that meal at home. So one of the focuses is that making the meal pleasing and appetizing, nutritious and delicious, and make sure that we also empower not only the students, but also administration to participate in our lunch program, breakfast program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's so much to do. I know that I have all these initiatives going on. March is actually uh, National Nutrition Month. We're planning to have Who's a Star with School Breakfast uh, with the elementary uh, students. They're gonna be performing on the theme, Wake Up to School Breakfast. That's the theme for this year. We're also going to have the Milk Mustache Campaign with the high school athletes. We're also going to have the Elementary Menu Advisory Committee, the Secondary Menu Advisory Committee. We're also going to have a parade. Possibly we're considering this with our uh, truck wrap delivery trucks. But I have a message in nutrition because we want to take the message home as well as they travel and people know, hey, that is LISD food. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's exciting. There's so much to do. Uh, sometimes there's not enough time in the day, but I, I tend to, you know, eat nutrition, think nutrition, sleep nutrition, and I have so much on my mind because I dearly, uh, it's near and dear to my heart is what I do. Okay. Uh, when we come back, we will learn more about the important assets that Mr. Cuella brings to LISD. Stay tuned. <laughs> Now, before we went on to the break, 
we were able to get a better understanding of what exactly Mr. Sequoia does in his position as the director of the LRG Child Nutrition Program. Now, uh, let's continue this on by asking, what do you expect for all the cafeteria staffs for all the LRG schools? Yes, one thing we're doing presently right now is uh, training. We're training for the new point of service uh, surface tablet system, where as the students go through the line, both in uh, you know, high school, middle school, and even now elementary, the the point of service person, or should we say, what we know the cashier the, as a title, uh, they make sure that there is a reimbursable meal where they're taking their entree, their size, and of course either half a cup of fruit or vegetable, and then uh, the student will put in their ID, or we're considering maybe a scanning code system where we just scan the ID as well. So we're trying to keep up with the trends of technology, where we have a better uh, counting and claiming system. Aside from that kind of training, we also have uh, food production record trainings that right now our menu planner is attending at Region 1. There's some changes coming on with the pi pipeline to make sure we follow through with the regulations. Uh, because our food production record, as I tell all cafeteria managers, and we all know in the Child Nutrition Program, that is our legal document that Texas Department of Agriculture looks at that tells the story of what happened throughout the day, you know, what kind of foods were served, if there was a special diet, if there was some leftover, so all that, it tells the whole spectrum story. Uh, other trainings that we're gonna have, and I am amazed and applaud the efforts of your VMT director, M Dr. Marta Villarreal, because she is gonna allow us to have summer conference here for the child nutrition programs. So we, dis we had the discussion points with the region one director, and we're gonna have it in the summer. So how sweet it is, we're gonna have it in a new facility where we're also gonna showcase the beautiful cafeteria along with the cafe that you all have here called the Cafe Medallion, where as you know with the high school now with the regulations, the high school students are allowed to have, you know, a 12 ounce um, cup of cappuccino coffee. It is allowed, just a minimum amount. Of course, it would be bought, you know, at a good price. So that, uh, other trainings, you know, the nutritionists are gonna be attending the trainings on a HACCP protocol on checking temperatures. Food safety, we have that ongoing for everybody to be make sure they have their food handlers uh, certificate as well. Uh, just ongoing, I just feel train is never, never enough to train. So I always have the mentality of retrain, retrain, retrain. So that's my philosophy because, you know, we, we stay in tune with what we need to do in child nutrition. Um, is it possible for there to be changes when needed for a child nutrition program? Yes, if, uh, there's times as a director, you know, at the end of the day, I need to make a change that's to benefit the district, benefit the child. Mm -hmm. uh, there's times that if we have an emergency situation, such as maybe there's a water breakage of a line, mm -hmm. then we have to have an emergency system where uh, the cafeteria managers are ready to have the meal served. Whether there's no water uh, or if there's no electricity, so there's always a, a plan B. We always have that because it does happen. Mother Nature or, or things of the nature where the pipe breaks and things like that, we need to be prepared because I want to make sure that all students have a meal that they do not go home hungry. Mm -hmm. Because my philosophy is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, hunger takes me on vacation, you know, although some people were, were thinking about summer already, uh, a lot of children, you know, want a meal. And I could honestly say that during the summer time, we're just as busy as during the school year. We have a lot of summer feeding sites that include schools, splash parks, recreation centers, also some churches, uh, So, and they're free, 18 years and younger. So uh, I, I, I applaud your efforts, Mr. Moncada, and I'm hoping that we could also uh, advertise and promote this because it's a win-win because uh, I wanna make sure that all students get a meal even when they're uh, in the summertime, come on by and uh, you know just have your meal, you know, breakfast or lunch or whatever we offer. Okay. Um, what is your ideal aspects for all students at LISD? My ideal aspects is to make sure that whatever we offer in the cafeteria, which we try our best to offer uh, presentable plates with a lot of color and vitamins and nutrients, to make sure that we also take that, that message home for the parents also are trying to also take I know it's not easy. Uh, we have a battle with the industry of fast food. Right? Uh, they focus on super size, or you know, for 99 cents you could get a little more. We need to be careful because nowadays we have what we call portion distortion, where the more we eat, the the more weight we gain. So we want to try to balance that out not only through eating well, 
but also through physical activity. So one of the philosophies is to make sure that not only as you're eating, you try to maybe afterwards do a little walk, brisk walk, or do some house chores, help your parents out, uh, or go bicycling. It's very important to keep that balance, you know. You don't want to separate the two. So, And uh, as you know, we used to use the Food Guide Pyramid. Now we use the Choose My Plate concept, where it allows you to select whatever you want in your plate, even at home. So for example, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. The other half, you know, one, one fourth of it should be your protein, which are your meats and your chicken, which should be the lean meats, the chicken, things like that. And then the other should be the, like the whole grain uh, items. For example, if you're gonna have spaghetti, consider having whole wheat spaghetti or have brown rice, things like that. So you wanna have half of your that of the pasta or the rice to be grain or whole food so and of course then the milk you know a lot of times we don't drink milk you can consider yogurt you can consider any dairies because it's important also to have that uh, calcium for our bones and our healthy teeth uh, you're watching who's who we'll be right back after this Welcome back. Now, um, how much has the Child Nutrition Program has changed from since from the past to the present? Good question, Mr. Moncada. Um, I know when I was in school, uh, for example, in, in elementary school, the uh, meal was, uh, there was not much selection. There we would have, for example, you know, burrito, and then you would get your corn, and then you would get a fruit, and then your your regular whole milk. Now, because of the issue of obesity, overweight, uh, there's more healthier items that one could select, even options. As I mentioned to you, uh, uh, we should feel excited and applaud our efforts because uh, we're one of very few school districts that have over 13 salad bars. And I know that it could be challenging at times, but I could tell you, rest assured, that if we offer a presentable uh, location, a uh, salad bar where we decorate it and where we offer variety. Children will have that curiosity and try to have that uh, salad. Uh, so that's has, that has changed since the beginning to now. Other things also is I do notice that we're still struggling. The challenge is trying to get uh, students to eat more vegetables. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not something new, but we try to encourage by offering, for example, broccoli with cheese or maybe spinach mandarin salad kind of put those things, uh, do a combination, because you know, uh, it could be appetizing if there's color presented and a little bit more of that, rather than just eating the spinach by itself. So aside from differences in menu and offering more healthier alternatives, there's also, uh, we have a new, uh, what I call the Child, Produ uh, Child Nutrition Center, where we have a state-of-the-art uh, facility. We have a two, uh, 220 pound, uh, gallon, pardon, kettles that you're able to do spaghetti sauces, uh, casseroles, things like that. So a lot of things that we do, you know, we do it, we cook it, then we chill it in our chiller, then we uh, get them labeled, put them in bags, and then they're ready to be then sent, uh, you know, for the following two weeks. So we work ahead of time. So it's like a production process, but we also have the bakery unit and things like that. So uh, and then when it gets to the school, it gets delivered, it's just basically just heat and serve. Uh, the only things that, that are still the same is, for example, if you get pizza from the school that is a healthier pizza that we offer, it would be from the, from the box, you know, from the frozen state to the oven. Mm -hmm. 
So that's not something that we have at the Child Nutrition Center. The, at the Child Nutrition Center, we just do the, the uh, nitty gritty, we add the ingredients and such. And a lot of the schools here also, you know, prepare minimal some of the items, but most of it is quality, it's fresh, mm -hmm. because we do ha follow the HACCP, the hazard analysis, critical control points where everything's checked. We have also uh, spot checks done. We also check our produce when it, it gets to the uh, dock area at our child nutrition center. And I get very excited because when we talk about food, there could be good things about food and not such good things about food. But we try to transform the negative into a positive, knowing that there is occasionally some food that may not be good, but that's why our managers and our dynamic cafeteria staff know that, you know, do your little HACCP form, you know, go ahead and discard and offer something that's more presentable or do a substitution because it can be done. Even when you go to a grocery store, there may be an apple that's not very appetizing. There may be a banana. So. Those are things that are as menu. Training, we now have a lot of webinars. We have a lot of uh, on-site trainings where nowadays we could also connect through the computer and try to get the gist of what needs to be done. Something new that, that is this year is as of July 1 of 2015, USDA has mandated for all child nutrition employees to have a certain amount of credit hours for professional standards because they want to up the standards for not only going all the way from um, the substitute to the director. Kay. So we do have some standards to meet as far as hours. And presently right now we have some managers that are attending a food production, or should I say, um, perpetual inventory class mm -hmm. where that's also gonna count for their uh, hours that are needed to work for child nutrition as far as USDA. The district really um, is in favor of that because they know that whatever USDA says, we need to follow through because we are federally funded. And what part of your role as a director for the Child Nutrition Program do you like the most? What I like the most is uh, I like to go visit the campuses. I like to talk to students. And I put myself in their shoes because one, one time I was in their shoes and I said, you know, if I can make a difference, what would I do? So I want to be a good listener. I want to try to be proactive, not reactive. I want to be positive and there's times you know whenever we meet with the elementary menu committee when we meet with the students of the secondary menu committee or even with the milk mustache campaign that we have with students that there's sometimes some dialogues that are tug of war mm -hmm. what i say is they may not be in favor of everything we're doing we're trying our best to just empower them and say this is the rules regulations we try to kind of balance that out uh, and that's what i enjoy uh, to talk because at the end of the day also when i get home i talk to my own children and ask how was your school day, how was your breakfast, how was your lunch, and I also get some information there to kind of give myself a reflection mode to see what I need to do to better the situation. And I hope that what I've done here in LISD, as long as I'm here as a director, that I leave little footprints, little seeds of encouragement so that people can know it's important to have the passion because really uh, people shouldn't just look at it for the money mm -hmm. because really this position, you do not become a millionaire but I have become a millionaire more than the money with the smiles that I bring to children, families, uh, because I do have a passion and the, my mission is to make sure that you nourish all students, you know, nourish their minds and bodies to graduate, to one day do what I'm doing as a director of the Child Nutrition Program for the best district in Laredo, which is Laredo ISD. Is there anything you would like to add to the people that are watching us right now? The only thing I want to say is uh, thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to discuss these important issues. I know there's certain uh, things like diabetes, obesity, uh, and also some issues regarding uh, menus. But for the most part, I think together when we have this dialogue, bring out the message that we do things just to follow through, not only with the guidelines, but also we try to do that checks and balances where the students also have a choice. So parents, I challenge you that you listen, that you make time to, to listen to your children because they are impactful and they could bring the difference in your life as well. Try to set the example at home because it's like they used to say, and I'll end it with this, you are what you eat. So it's important, parents, that you also set the example at home, everything in moderation. It's once in a while it's okay to eat, uh, what I say, junk food, because I eat it myself, but let that not be every day. So just try to live a healthy, productive life with healthy eating, physical activity as a family, and you're gonna go very, very far away, very long way in the journey of health and wellness because in Laredo, I do have a vision and passion that we are a healthy city. We just need to empower each other, not devour each other. Sure. All right. Thank you.
you so much for being here. Thank you, sir, uh, for the invitation. All that's all the time we have today. Uh, I would like to thank my guest, uh, Mr. Roberto Cuellar, for being able to come talk to us about the Child Nutrition Program for LISD. I'm your host, Jonathan Mercado, and this has been Who's Who in Laredo. Thanks for watching. See you next time.